um, classroom. You're doing numbers 18 through 23. And then 24 to 27. And then 28 to 31. This is in classroom as well. I could have written this as 18 to 31 because really they're consecutive. These are one kind of problem, these are another kind of problem, and these are a third kind of problem. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We're going to do one of each together. Okay? So we're going to start with number 18. And it has to go on that graph paper I had you guys get. Actually, no, we're going to do 19 because it's got a negative slope. Okay, so let's write down number 19. It's y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 3. The directions for 60, for this section of 61 for 18 through 23 says sketch the graph of each equation. Well, we're going to not just sketch it. We're going to make it pretty clear because we're using graph paper. So make a coordinate plane. Look at your notes on how to make a line from an equation. The first thing is to find the the first thing is to find the y-intercept. And the second thing is to find the slope. So what is our y-intercept here? Okay. What is our slope here? Okay. So to graph this, first thing I want to do is put the 3 on the graph. Where does the 3 go? On the y-axis. 1, 2, 3. Now, our slope is negative. Unlike our example we wrote in our book, that was positive. <clears throat> so we've got a negative, and we have a rise of 1 and a run of 3. Oops, sorry, two. Thank you. I was still thinking of three from the y-intercept. Thanks for the correction. That is a really messy looking two. One of those has to go positive, and one of them has to go negative. If they both go negative, negative, negative is positive, right? So when I usually do a negative, I either rise and then run left because up would be positive and left would be negative. Or I drop down, negative, and go right. Because down is negative and right is So let's do it both ways just to prove that it works both ways. If I go up one, that's a positive rise, yes? And then I need what kind of a run? Negative. One, two. Is that going to make a negative line? Because I rose up positive and I ran to the left negative. The other way is to go negative with your rise, which would really be a drop, and to run positive, which would be to the right. But it it's going to give me the same line either way. So if I've got a negative, one of these has to be a positive, and one of them has to be a negative. And it doesn't matter which one. If I did them both positive, I would have ended up with a point over here and my line would go this way. And that's a positive line and then I know I didn't done it wrong, right? Correct? So, <clears throat> here's my line. The title of your graph is the equation. And the equation tells you what your line should look like. 
There are five more of these who feels like they can practice these now. Thumbs up, thumbs, thumbs, thumbs. That doesn't mean you feel like you're perfect at them, but you feel like you could try this, yes? Okay, let's go try on the binder paper, number 24. This is the graph for number 24. I need two things from it in order to write the equation, which is what the directions are. I need the opposite of what we just did. We had an equation and we made a graph. Now we're going to take the graph and we're going to make the equation. But we need the same things. We need the y-intercept and we need the slope. Okay, what's the y-intercept of this line? Where is it crossing the y-axis? Okay, so I'm going to try, can you guys see both here? So my b is equal to positive 1. You should use your binder paper. You're not going to have room to do all of this on the graph paper. What's my slope? First thing I notice is what kind of line it is, which is? Negative. So my slope is going to be negative. I see a point here. And of course we had this point here. We want to count down and over or go from this point and go up and over. This is going down, which is negative, going to the right, which is positive. A positive and a negative make a negative line, right? What's my rise? And what's my run? So with that, I can write the equation. Y equals negative 1 over 3x plus 1. And that's it. If you want more practice on this, you could write the equation for the lines on the paper I gave you on Tuesday. Because tomorrow, with our short day, I want us to go over, and I'll actually see you guys a little longer than my other classes. I want us to go over this homework and Tuesday's homework. So come with questions on both. But if you want more practice writing equations from graphs, you can do it off of that paper from Tuesday. Let's skip, I'm gonna skip to the back and do 28. It says, write the equation of the line that passes through the given point. I'm going to change that direction. Well, we could write it. What's 0, 1? It's a y-intercept. So we know that the equation is going to be y is equal to something x plus 1. Why do I know that? Because 0, 1 is the y-intercept. If the x is a 0 and there's a number in the y, that's where it crosses the y-axis. How do I find the slope? I use the slope equation. That y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2. What's my change and y over change in x is the question. Let's take this and write it down. 1 over 0 minus 2 over 2. Go ahead and do the work in that equation. What are you guys getting in the y place? Negative 1 over? Equals positive one half. So this equation is y is equal to one half x plus one. Another way you could solve these, you could put both these points on a line and count slope rise over run, right? 
What takes the least work? Probably this. Okay. Questions? 